So apart from the COVID-19 pandemic, which is kindly uh, taking all our social media screens, one of the things to, as far as education in Ghana is concerned, is the pre tertiary Education Bill 2019. Uh, it's one of the things which is also generating a lot of it, especially among uh, stakeholders in education. So today, we are here to pursue the agenda, dissect it, and for you to know what the bill is really entailed and what's the disagreement between the policymakers and the real people on the ground. So this is dead on like follow and let's get the issues dissected. So today we are honored to have one of the uh, giant people in Ghana National Association of Teachers. Formerly, he was with the Western and Western North uh, region as the secretary now he's up there i want i want him to give us uh, the current position at the headquarters right thank you very much um, my name is nicholas taylor i am currently with the administration and organization department of nat headquarters that's fine you, you used to work at the central region to the western and then yes uh, i started as a uh, this is not secretary as far as nat is concerned i started as this is not secretary for gumwa and then I became the Assistant Regional Secretary West Central uh, up to 2019. Um, and then I became the Western Regional NAS Secretary. So the Western Region is made up of the, the Western and the Western North. For NAT, we have not um, separated yet. Mm -hmm. So we are operating the two together. So um, March this year that I went to the headquarters to the Administration Organization Department. Uh, so first of all, congratulations for your appointment. And then, so you should know that this is one of the best guys for this interview, as far as this uh, bill is concerned. Now, somebody will ask the pre tertiary education bill. What is really about it? Okay, thank you very much. The pre tertiary education bill is supposed to cede the administration of basic schools to these assemblies, and also to enhance the regional coordinating councils overseeing the activities of the senior high schools. And it's looking at decentralization. The purpose of the bill, the intent of the bill, is to enhance decentralization of education in Ghana. So that is what the bill seeks to do. So that the pre tertiary school that is there from KG to senior high schools will be managed by the district level and then the regional coordinating councils. So that is the uh, objective of the pre tertiary education bill. So this objective, to, to the best of my knowledge, is very good. If we are decentralizing our education system, to me, as a layman, I will see it to be very good. What is the beef about nuts and teachers agitating against this bill? Okay. Thank you very much. The intent of unions and uh, individuals who are speaking against the bill is not against decentralization as a concept. In fact, every well-meaning Ghanaian who wants the development of the nation will always think that we need to de uh, decentralize. I mean, there are some things you don't need to go to Accra before you can do it. There are some things you don't even need to go to a region. We have the district and sometimes the unit committees, they should be able to help us implement some of these things. But the bill as it stands now has very serious problems. And so we are looking at this problem that is with the bill and how all of us can look at it. Our first challenge with the bill is that if you are looking at a bill that is going to regulate pre tertiary schools in this country, and we have teachers who are main stakeholders, you don't introduce the bill in parliament without our consent. And that was the first thing that was done. The bill went to parliament at a blind side. It was when we heard that the bill has been read, I think for the first time, that our leaders asked for a copy of the bill. In fact, the letter we wrote to the Minister of Education for a copy of the bill, the minister didn't respond to our letter until we went to the parliamentary select of a uh, committee on education who gave us a copy of the bill before we perused and saw that no these are serious problems so we were at a loss that you want to introduce a bill into parliament that will regulate education and teachers were not called no input from us was taken and it is there that was our first beef secondly uh, let, let me get that clear so is it that nat wasn't called or no teacher union no teacher leadership was called in in drafting this bill Na neither not no nagrat no cct no attack or innovative nobody was called 
the bill went to parliament without our consent. So all of that, that is why all the three unions, major three unions in the education sector, NAT, Nagra, CC, that's why we came together and held a press conference, I think that was 14th uh, February or so, about our, our disappointment that a bill like this is going to parliament without our consent. So we were not aware. We were not aware in the first place. So, and secondly, we have already existing laws in this country. And so if you are bringing a new law, ideally, the, I'm not a lawyer, but you have to look at the existing laws and the new one you are bringing, such that the new law should not contradict major laws in the country. Now, there was a matter that the Supreme Court ruled. And that matter was between, uh, Afanyi Makin had taken some people, uh, uh, somebody at the uh, Ghana Highways Authority, and then a lady at a uh, Swesco. Mm -hmm. He took them to court that they were civil servants or public servants, and therefore they were not supposed to participate in partisan politics. Okay. Now, if you look at the ruling of the Supreme Court, it says that there are some of the services that have been banned from taking part in active politics. But Ghana Education Service and Ghana Highways Authority, they are not part of that group. So even though, if you go to Article 190 of the 1992 Constitution, Ghana Education Service is listed as one of the public institutions. The Supreme Court says that we are not bad from participating in partisan politics. Now, with the bill that is coming, if you look at the bill as it stands, if you look at portions of the bill, which I will be making reference to, okay. it says that teachers, uh, upon being admitted or having having employed us, having if the this one comes into law, mm -hmm. it means that all teachers of the basic sector are going to be offloaded to the uh, local government service. Okay. Now the civil service is a service on its own. Okay. And Article One Ninety, Ghana Education Service, there, the prison service, the health service, the all the services, all these ones are there. So if we have not amended Article One Ninety. Why are you bringing one service under another? It's a serious breach. I'm not a lawyer anyway. I, I will repeat that. I'm not a lawyer. But if the 1992 Constitution, Article 190, has not been amended, and then Ghana Education Service is there as a body on its own, the Ghana, uh, the civil service is there also as a, as a service on its own. And then you are saying that now portions of the Ghana Education Service will be truncated and put under civil service. What is, what, what is the problem? So we think that it's a serious challenge with that. So we are saying that, per the Supreme Court ruling, teachers are not civil servants. Okay. Or the Supreme Court says that we have been specifically left, been left out of those who can participate in active politics. So by sending us back to that place, it means that you are also curtailing these provisions that have been made for the teacher, which we think is not good for the price of teaching. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is that the GES, we have a bill already. We have the Ghana Education Service Act, Act 506. Ghana Education Service Act, Act 506 of uh, 1995. Okay. Then we also have the Main Education Act, which is also the Act 778 of 2008. Now, when this bill was, when this act was passed, the Act 78 was passed, if you look at the last portions, it says that Within 12 months of the coming into force of this act, the Gun Education Service Act 1995, the one I mentioned earlier, shall be amended to conform with the provisions of this act. It means that when this bill comes, we should just look at the first act that is existing, the 1995 one. And therefore, if there are any provisions that contradict the 778, it should be amended. Should be amended. There's no need for the introduction of a new bill at all. So if you look at the provisions of the Act, Act 506 and Act 778, there is no need and there's no way that that is so, so, so serious that we should come with a new bill to truncate the Hogan Education Service. Even if you look at the, the 778, which is the existing one, it was passed in 2008, at least about 12 years ago. Just about 12 years ago. There are some provisions in the bill which, as we speak, we have not implemented. You look at the National Teaching Council that the bill says it should, that the access it should come into force. The National Teaching Council has been formed at Accra. It is operating somehow. We don't, we, we don't know them in fact, at the regional level and at the district levels. If they are supposed to come there, where are they? We need to make sure that our, our, our institutions are properly strengthened and resourced to function. There's nothing new in this bill. 
that the Act 778 has not introduced. I mentioned that the bill is supposed to be for decentralization. If you look at Section 3 of the Education Act 778, it says that the minister shall take measures for the effective decentralization of executive responsibility for the provision and management of basic and second cycle schools to the district assembly. And now you also bring a bill that says that basic education will be managed by this assembly and then the uh, um, city high schools are to be managed by regional coordinating councils. So it means that this one is against already what is existing. Because this one said that both the, the, the second cycle and the first cycle should be managed by the disassembly. That is section, section 3 of the Act 778. So is, is this new bill not questioning this bill that you are saying it's contradicting? Yes. Is it not? Is it not coming to take all these ones out? <laughs> or we are coming to have all of them being implemented at the same time so that if it is really coming to quash this one out, then there's no uh, sense of contradiction. Good. I, I agree with you. And of course, if you go to the, the repeal portions of the, of the new act that have been proposed, it says that with the coming on to, into effect of this one, it means that all these laws, the 778 and then the act uh, 506, they are all going to be repealed. Okay. <laughs> You understand? Yeah. Where are we going? You introduced a bill eight years ago, which provisions of the bill we have not yet uh, implemented. And now we are saying that because of this bill, because of this centralization, all these ones must go. Now, if you, even if you look at the fact that it is for decentralization, there are provisions that still say that if a teacher wants to go beyond one district, they should clear it with the head of local government service in Accra. A decentralized bill. We are talking about doing that at the district level. Okay. So why now that if a teacher wants to be transferred over a district from one district to another, then it should be done by the, the, the local council. Now look at section six of the new thirty six of the new bill that is to be introduced. Teachers employed in the basic schools are on coming into force of this act transferred to the local government service. So it means that the basic level is now going to be truncated from government education service. <laughs> You, that is our problem. Now, when you come to GES, we have a peculiar I issue. That is, we have a condition of service that transcends from the director general to the KG teacher, to the new teacher. Now, if you put the senior high schools under regional coordinating councils, you put the basic schools under district assemblies, one, are they going to have the same condition of service? Or are we going to have a condition, a situation where each disassembly is going to have its own conditions for the teachers. These things are not clear. These things are not clear. And we need, you see, when we are dealing with laws, I mean, you pass this law, and anybody who comes after the passage of the law is supposed to implement the law. And so we are concerned that if we are going to implement the law, then we have to make sure that all these things are properly ironed out so that we can see our way forward. Now, let us look at the capacity of these assemblies in Ghana to manage schools. Go around the schools. I mean, you are in the media, you have been going around a lot. Are our disassemblies in the position currently even to manage, maintain our, our, our schools in the system? That is, one, that is one major problem. Now we are going to put the whole management of the disassembly in the hands of the education, in the hands of the disassembly. Do they have the capacity? How has the government built the capacity of the disassemblies to manage all these institutions in their in their, in their in their in their in their areas of jurisdiction? Currently, is the schools not managed in a way by the district assemblies? Are the projects in the school not uh, taking charge and funded by the district assemblies? And when we say that they are going to fund projects, manage them, does it really mean that the funds are going to come from the district assemblies themselves, so that we don't we don't look at their financial strength? But because we know that some of most of the districts we have in Ghana here are financially handicapped, but they are the same which have been taking charge of projects we have in our schools by sourcing from the central government. Mm -hmm. So th these are some of the things that we want to get clear. If you look at section 30 of the bill, which is yet to come, the pre-tertiary bill, it says that the, the education unit, now, even now we are not going to have this education director again, no. We are going to have this education officer. And the education director is now going to be education unit. 
And you know, let me, I will come to the question, but let, let's say that when you come to governance, okay, this unit, commission, directorate, they all have their commensurate powers. Okay. So that if you are made just a unit, I mean, just an appendage of the assembly, but we are talking about the directorate that is capable of collaborating with the assembly to make sure things are done. That is one of our most important things that we don't want the education service, education director at this level to be collapsed into a unit. It makes the, the, the education service subservient, which is not good. Now, so then let me come to the point. The education unit shall, prep, the, shall look at the preparation, administration, and control of budgetary allocation as determined by this assembly. This is where the problem is coming from. So it means that it, is that it didn't say that central government is going to pay anything. And so if they want to tell us that the assemblies will just look at the, uh, maybe the burden of the infrastructure, the, the maintenance of the schools and the TLMs and all that, and salaries and emoluments will come from central government. We are not, the law doesn't talk about it. But I have seen 30, section 30, C, uh, 2C, which is saying that the assembly, the education unit is going to look at the preparation, administration, and control of budget allocation as determined by this assembly. You see that? And, and this, this is a source of worry. Have, have they gotten the, capab the capability, the financial wherewithal, to be able to shoulder this burden? How has the government empowered them to do the work that they are asking them to do? That is one of our problems. Meaning the, the education as a unit will be part of that assembly. Sure. So this thing will be prepared hand in hand with the, the officers who will be appointed to man the unit of education under the assembly. That is what it's supposed to be. Okay. You see, that is what it's supposed to be. Okay. You see, we are worried because in, in Ghana and of course we, we, we will go to other parts of the bill, that makes us a little more worried. In Ghana, when you have a law and you don't tighten things properly, you make things so open. I mean, politicians, as we know them to be, they can abuse the system. They can use the loopholes to, to manipulate the system. And that is where we are not happy. And we think that if the government really want to implement this bill, which we think is not necessary, which we think is not necessary, if the government still want to look at it, then they should look at these things and tighten the places. Uh, let us look at uh, portions of the bill, which I think we still have problems with. Now, the, if you look at, for example, section... Uh, section 23 of the bill. The president shall, in accordance with Article 195 of the Constitution, appoint officers necessary for the efficient and effective performance of the functions of the education service. You see, when you come to GES, we have means of progression. We have our scheme of service. So if you're a teacher, you spend a certain number of, number of years on a particular rank, and you are promoted to the next rank, you are promoted to the next rank. Currently, if you, want, if you, you are to be a this director of education, you must be on the rank of director two to be a this director. If you are to be a regional director or divisional director at headquarters, you must be on the rank of director one. Now, the president is to appoint officers necessary. What is their rank? What Which means that the president is not going to make use of the rank, the qualification, and all that. It's, it's open. Okay. The president shall appoint. Now, as we speak, we have the Director General of Ghana Education Service, Professor Opoko Amankwa. He's a trained teacher. I understand from Wesley College, so I stand for correction. But I understand he's a trained teacher. But he taught for a while and has been teaching most, almost all his life at the, at the tertiary institution, I think tech also. And then now he's, he has been brought at the, the, uh, the Director General of the Education Service. You see? So it means that for the, for the appointment of the Director General and the Deputies, I mean, it has been presidential appointment. That's why we don't have a problem with it. But for the Regional Director of Education, for this Director of Education, please let the system work. Let people progress so that people don't teach in the system for about 20 years, for about 25 years, and you bring somebody who has no, no knowledge in education to come and superintend over us. We cannot, we cannot accept that. Let the system work, let people progress and attain that rank and then go and manage education. So you bring people who don't have anything to do about education and they come and mess up. So that is one of our problems that we have. So section 23 of the bill, where the president appoint officers necessary. What is the meaning? 
So that has it, it doesn't mean that they have their own people, they have groomed, they have purposed, so that if the bill goes through, they are going to bring these people to money education. Is that what we are saying? And let me point it here that we as unions, we are not targeting a particular regime like NPP or NDC. And I think that all that we have done, we don't want to mix it with politics at all. Because in Ghana, when you get any case and you throw it into the arena of MPP and NDC, you destroy the matter. This bill, if it is passed and NDC comes to power, whatever time, they are supposed to work with it. If MPP passes it, they are, they are, if they win, continue to win power, they are going to work with it. And so for us, whether it is MPP or NDC, we don't care. And I'm, I'm saying that in my life as a unionist, I don't, I don't see MPP government, I don't see NDC government. What I see is government of Ghana. Okay. So this bill is being implemented by the government of Ghana and we are not happy with it. And we are saying that the president should step in and ensure that these things are, are, are not done. Section 23 Other public offices may be transferred or seconded to the education service or may otherwise give assistance to the education service. These are the rules. We are saying that the rules are there and we don't want to give room for anybody to manipulate the law. If they want to pass this law, they should look at it because as it stands, it's a very serious law that will not help education in this country. My brother, let us <coughs> kindly look at um, Article 30. Let, let, let me get here. The Section 23. Good. One, it reads, the President shall, in accordance with Article 195 of the Constitution, appoint officers necessary mm. for the efficient and effective performance of the function of the education mm. service. What you are saying is that since the qualifications and the ranks are not spelled out, mm. the President can just go and pick an engineer, go and pick a politician to head the regional uh, office of and education. Yes, that's exactly what, oh, exactly what we are saying. Okay. The qualifications are not stated. Okay. So the president has the, has the liberty to, to appoint anybody. anybody. Okay. And then even if you go to the section 23 that you read, the two, yeah. other public, public officers may be transferred or seconded. Okay. You see? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 is, it is creating a room, subtly, so that if that thing is done, then nobody can question it because the law allows that. Okay. Let, let's also go to um, for example, the, the, this is the 29, the disassembly responsible for schools, uh, section 29. And the disassembly shall, shall establish basic schools on the recommendation of the diseducation officer. So now we don't have education director again, though. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't understand things. Why are we truncating the education service? So now, the Ghana education service that is provided for by the, the constitution, that is supposed to run from the top to down. Now we are saying that it should run at the headquarters, it should come to a region. When it comes to a district, we don't, we don't seem to have education service. We cannot truncate the system like that. And so we need to look at it. So if we are there to establish on the recommendation of the, of the, of the officer in charge of education, colleagues, my point is this. You know, when the, when the president, I think the former president who appointed some people to the Supreme Court, uh, the Ghana Bar Association also triggered a court action that there should be consultation and then there should be advice to the president in the appointment of those people. So the matter was taken to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled that the advice and the consultation that is in the constitution is not binding on the president. You see, so when we say that the president is going to do this in consultation with this, in consultation with this, in consultation with this, these are just an embellishment. The appointing authority is the president. So we should not think that because they say they are going to, the DCE will appoint in consultation with education officer, water, 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 that advice from that particular person is not binding on the DCE. They have the right to appoint. And we should not tickle ourselves and laugh. And that is one of our major problems that we are having. That if we are going to have a, a education service, we should have education service that is solid and not education service that is hanging, that is wobbling, that is truncated at a point. So please, our appeal to government president is that we don't need this bill. If you look at seven, se section 778 that I mentioned, that the, the, the labor, uh, the the Education Act 778 of 2008. My brother, there are provisions there. We have not gone through it. If um, I understand the minister is, uh, has a medical background, okay, and it tells you that, if you look at the bill, it says that the minister shall take steps to do comprehensive medical education eh, for the children. The bill has been passed 12 years now. Have we heard of anything like that in the system?
So we, some of us think that even the minister having a medical background, he should be pushing for some of these things and not to throw the bill away. 12 years, the bill has done. We have not done, we have not put all the structures in place and we are saying that throw it away. We think that it doesn't help. Let us look at the bill. Let us put away this bill and then concentrate on how to look at other, other sectors and that will help us. Uh, I was saying that this bill is saying we are going to decentralize. Go to section 32. Section 32, 4. Now, inter-district transfer, and let me take it from even three. The district officer in charge of education unit at the Department of Education, Youth and Sports may only transfer a head teacher or a staff of a basic school where the transfer is to another school within the same district, section 32, three. It means that if a teacher wants to be transferred, you can only be transferred, be within your own district. And then if you go to section four, which worsens the matter? Inter-district transfer of a head teacher or staff of a basic school may only be undertaken by the head of local government service. Why not the director general? Why not? It means, it means that there's an intention that we should now be part of the, what, the local government service, which we think it doesn't help. So we think that if it, be, if it should be somebody at headquarters, it should be done by the director general and not the head of local government service. So if you're a teacher and you want to go and transfer, you have to be, be roaming within your district only. Why? What have we done? What have we done to demand this kind of treatment? So that if you're a teacher, you cannot move beyond your district again? I mean, it's serious. You see, if you take time to peruse the whole document, we are heading towards a problem. And if we don't look at it, that's a section 31. <laughs> the head of local government service in consultation with the education service, section 31 of the bill, shall one appoint the head and staff of the education unit. So now, if a head of the education is appointed, it should come from the head of local government service. When, this, when now regional directors have the right to appoint these directors who are on the rank of director two, now the head of local government service is supposed to come and do this appointment. Where, where are we going? Are we, have we put in the structures to come and to, to do all this kind of thing? One serious point, section 32. Section 32. Hmm. The district officer in charge of education unit at the Department of Education Youth and on behalf of the head of local government service and acting on the recommendation of the head of the this education unit is responsible for the appointment, promotion, discipline, dismissal of the head teachers and staff of the basic schools. In GES, when we talk about dismissal, it is the function of the GES council, not any subservient body. So that if somebody wants a teacher misconduct him or herself and he's to be disciplined, he's to be dismissed actually, it has to go through a process. And now, as it stands, it means that at the district level, you are dismissed and that is your fate. Unless the court that's you that's it. that's provision. Most people may disagree because they think that mm. that is even given the whole the whole process to be tedious. If somebody or the authorities want to penalize somebody, a teacher, mm -hmm. for a misconduct it needs to travel all the way to the headquarters mm -hmm. before such uh, punishment is meted to the person right. so if it come closer to the local level where we are the people who can see that this teacher is sexually abusing students this teacher is a drunkard this teacher is doing that the district or the local level will have uh, that, that power mm -hmm. to penalize a person instead of it traveling from the district to the region to the headquarters before such punishment is meted to the person thank you very much why do we have the circuit court and the appeals court and the supreme court if we need things to be done at the circuit level, maybe somebody has gone to steal a goat, we think that the person has stolen a goat and let us punish the person. Why doesn't it end at the, uh, the circuit court or something? But the person has the right to go to the appeals court, to go to the other, other superior court of adjudicature. So the, the fact that you can go to the process is not just a truncation. There's a reason for it. Otherwise, people can abuse the law. A district chief executive who doesn't want a teacher, a, a director who thinks that a teacher must go off a system can just dismiss a teacher. And that is the end. If we allow that, it is recipe for serious disaster. So that if you are dismissed, I mean, not is one institution that will never 
condone teachers uh, like like for example those who are the male, the male teachers who sometimes um, engage in nefarious activities with the, with the female children we are seriously against it and I as a secretary I've always said that if you're a teacher and you go involve yourself in such defilement cases and you are taken to court when you invite me I won't come I won't come because if it's done to my daughter I will not be happy so no NAT officer will just uh, uh, be supporting a teacher who is going who is doing the wrong thing but there are cases where people are victimized people are victimized sometimes on the political grounds sometimes they have said something that they, that they don't like and all that and they want the teacher completely out of the of, out of the district and now if the, the bill is implemented and then a, a dc wants a teacher out of a district and the head of local gov, uh, government service is not having a place to put a teacher what's the fate of the teacher Another argument is that Ooh. under current system, the politicians still have ways of doing all these things that you are you are mentioning. They can go to the district director of education and just tell that this particular teacher needs to be transferred from here to this place. This teacher needs to be dismissed, and he will, he will make sure he uses political powers to pursue that agenda till it is done through the director of education at that level. So this, to some people, is already in existence. Thank you very much. The, if you say a teacher should be transferred from one point to another, already the law says, the, the Code of Conduct of Ghana Education Service, it says that the transfer of teachers is the prerogative of this director of education. Thank you. you see that? So the director can transfer the teacher to one, from one point to another. All that we, the unions, will ask is that the teacher should be given the transfer grant and TNT if the teacher has been transferred by the Ghana Education Service. In terms of transfer, no district uh, uh, chief executive, no. No one can ask a director to, to, to dismiss a teacher. At best, you can ask for transfer. But as it stands now, if we pass this bill, the, the power to dismiss is within the purview of the, this assembly, which we think is serious. And it should not be made to happen. Because what we are saying is that with the bill as it stands, it is, it is giving so much political hands into education. That is, that is our worry. Otherwise, we don't have any problem. All of us are aware of the way Ghana has been, pol have been polarized on political grounds. NDC comes and they want all the heads of department, heads of agencies and institutions to be headed by NDC people. MPP comes, they want to drive all these people away and they bring their people to head these institutions. Is that what we want in education? No. We should not bring so this kind of direct politics into education. And now you have a, a, a provincial saying that, the, 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 the education, head of education unit, in consultation with the assembly, they are going to appoint heads of, head of, head of schools. Where are we going? So we, 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 we like decentralization. We will go for it. We are happy with it. But not the way this bill has been crafted. Not at all. We, we will continue to appeal that this, this bill should be dropped. This bill should be dropped. If it is passed, it is going to worry all of us. And you see, uh, some people are also saying that the unions, we are afraid that when the bill is passed, our front is going to be disintegrated. I don't see it. We have a, we have a, a, a union called Kruksa, that the uh, uh, civil and local governments are switching and order. Some of their members are in the assemblies. Some of their members are in the regional, regional uh, assemblies, like the coordinating councils. Some of their members are at the headquarters. They are still members of Kruksa. So, so that argument, I, I don't see it. So far as a worker is paid, and you know in government the, the dues of the unions are normally taken through the check-off system by the controller or by the paying agency. So wherever they are going to be paid, the dues, when it's agreed upon between us and the members, it will still be there. So we are not afraid of the, getting members out of our system, no. But we want the right thing to be done. And the Ghana Education Service must stand as Ghana Education Service. Not a Ghana Education Service that works to a regional level and is truncated. But if, if you look at, uh, if you look at uh, the session, session uh, 8, functions of the, of the Education Service, Section 8, you come to the, the E, and it says that they should be responsible for the management of the human resource of the kindergarten, primary, and junior high schools. Okay, so the same education service that is supposed to be truncated at the regional level, that same education service is not going to manage the, rest, the human resource of the kindergarten, primary schools, and, and junior high schools. What a contradiction. 
What a contradiction. So, so colleagues, uh, friends in the media, the general people of Ghana, we are saying that the introduction of this bill will not help us. It will not add anything. Because if it's about decentralization, section, section 3 of the existing Education Act has made provision for effective decentralization. We should pursue that and let GES stand as GES where we are going to have our district directors, our regional directors, and the appointment will be done through our own internal system, not a DCE appointing people for us. Not the president appointing to the extent of appointing even regional directors and deputy regional directors. No. At least these people should go to the, the ranks. They should achieve their particular rank to be a deputy regional director or a regional director and get appointed. People should get the satisfaction in the work. You see, when you are talking about motivation, it's not about the money. Somebody has taught for a certain number of years, and the person thinks that, oh, by this time, I'm also at least matured for the headship of a particular institution. Then and then, you bring somebody outside. Do you think the person who, who was there will have that motivation to give off his best? Okay, so um, wrapping up. So what else are, is, is not another teacher union doing? Because uh, somebody will say that you are dealing with strong powers, the politician, and this time, the government in itself. Mm -hmm. So if through the media uh, sending your signals to the government through any ways that you can do the government is still not listening to you what are you resorting to <laughs> thank you very much right so uh, your question is very important you know uh, we have always had very fruitful discussions with government agencies including the ministry we remember that when there was a particular issue about the human resource management information system that was posing problems for promotions in GES, we appealed to the president. Mm -hmm. And he took the intervention, direct intervention of the president himself to reverse that. To reverse that. Mm -hmm. So we trust the president will be able to listen to us. So because of that, all the things that we can do as unions, which are under our sleeves, so. we are also trying to go letter by letter. If we see that the ministry is not listening to us, we go to parliament, they are not listening to us. We have the president, we appeal to the president. If the president doesn't listen to us, then the unions will now have to also uh, try, try to now come up with all we can do legally to make sure that this bill is not passed. You see, uh, we are saying this because when the bill was sent and they were discussing it, when we saw it, we went to parliament and they directed it to the ministry. So the ministry to GES invited us. So we met with them on the 27th of February or so. And then from there, they said that uh, we should bring our inputs, which we did. So all we're saying that they said they were going to brief their superiors and get back to us. Only to see that the bill has been under this COVID-19, where all of us are thinking about how the, how the nation can come together and fight the COVID-19. All schools are down. All institutions, major institutions are down except financial and, and, and the critical institutions. And now the bill has been surreptitiously sneaked into parliament. What is the intention? What do, what do they want to hide? Because they know that if they should do it in good times, maybe by this time we'll be on demonstration. By this time we'll be, we'll be maybe doing some picketing. By this time we'll be, we'll be engaging with our individual parliament. We, we have a, we, I have an MP uh, for, for Agona. Sure. Some of those has an MP. We are going to mobilize ourselves and go to our MP. That MP, we don't want this bill passed. Look at the provision that we, that, that we are seeing. But they know that all this is we cannot do. And now look at how they have, I mean, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't give a, a good faith. And so we are appealing to parliament that they should not go ahead with the consideration of the bill. This is the second time. If it goes within that, they are reading for the second time. And I think in parliamentary process, when it is read for the third time, it means that the bill is practically passed. If the bill is passed in its form, I think the unions will actually do what we can do to make sure that people will hear our voices. So we are not, we are not actually against uh, the whole process. We are against the way they are going about things. We are against the bill itself because of the provisions in there. We are against the manner in which this bill is being, is being projected. And we think that this is not the best way to go. We, want to, we will continue to appeal to the president because he's the, the father of the land. He was able to do it. And I think that if we appeal to him, he can also look at it and make sure that this bill is reversed. So we want to continue to appeal to our teachers. They should remain calm. If parliament decides to continue with the discussion, Sometimes it's even possible that even within the same COVID-19, if Parliament can do it, we can also have a way of, 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 of showing our, our displeasure about this bill. And that is what we, we, want, we want to talk about.
So if you're a teacher out there, if you're a stakeholder, you'll be rest assured that NATS and other teacher unions are pursuing that agenda on your behalf. They are doing all what they can. You listen to him, and he said that they are going to use all forces legally to pursue the agenda. So we rest assured that this education bill, to the best of their knowledge, will not be the best for Ghana, and they will not sit idle for it to happen. This has been the other online. I want to say uh, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you very much, my brother. God bless you. All right. So watch us on all our social media handles. It's Dead or Online, D33DW. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and enjoy all our videos. Thank you very much. My name has been Diffio. Dead or Online.